Guten Gardening, everybody! You know, in our news feed, we typically get quite a few gardening-related articles for some reason. And a lot of times I think about sharing them with you, and there's some interesting stuff, some interesting research around gardening, and there are things like that that I'd like to share, but I don't often do it. One of the things that I know is that articles can be biased, articles can have some useful information, uh, but you don't trust everything that you read. Well, earlier this week, I came across an article, I read it, and I thought this was too good not to share because I think it can elicit a good amount of discussion around the topic of the article, which was the 11 most difficult vegetables to grow in your garden. Now, this is, of course, an article where there's going to be lots of questions as to whether or not these are true for everyone. And I think actually creating a list like this is difficult, especially given that everyone has different growing conditions, different hardiness zones that they live in. And so to say, well, these are the definitive 11, I think is a little bit impossible, but I think it does lead to some pretty good discussion around the challenges of growing some of these vegetables. Now there's only one vegetable on this list and I'm gonna show you right away that I haven't had any experience trying to grow here at Guten Gardening. So I can't really speak to that, but I can definitely speak to the other 10. Now, as you're watching this video, if one of these vegetables sh shows up and you can't believe it's on the list, or one of these vegetables shows up and you completely agree, we'd love to hear about it in the comments. This is an interactive video where we'd love to hear your feedback, your experiences, and without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. One of the things that I did want to point out though is at the beginning of this article, they say, and I quote, for a stressless planting season, you'll want to avoid these 11 difficult varieties to grow in your garden, or perhaps you're up to the challenge, but don't say we didn't warn you. Well, let's see if we agree with this article. The first vegetable they have on their list is the one that I can tell you we've had no experience growing here at Guten Gardening, and that is the artichoke. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. I do know that it says the artichoke typically grows in zones six through nine, and we're in zone five, Wisconsin. But if you've had some experience with the artichoke, I love the way it tastes, but if you've had some experience growing it and you agree or disagree, let us know in the comments. But second up on this list is celery. And it's kind of interesting to me because we don't typically grow celery here for the same harvest that I think you would see at the grocery store. And what I mean by that is when we grow celery here, whether we're talking about growing it from transplants, which I would argue is definitely easier, or growing it from seed, we leave it in the garden the whole season long and we take off the outer stalks and let the plant itself keep growing. It sounds a little bit like cut and come again. The, the outer stalks aren't going to grow more, but the interior can keep developing. So we've had celery growing here for four or five months easily, and we've been able to eat off it the whole time. And from our point of view, while growing it from seed is more challenging, it hasn't been all that difficult. I do know it has uh, shallower roots, and so you wanna make sure you do a good job with watering. You stay on top of that. And I definitely understand that it doesn't like weed competition. It doesn't like the weeds around it at all. But for us, it hasn't been too difficult. So I don't necessarily agree that this one should be on the list. But the third one on the list, I agree with for quite a few reasons. But cauliflower is an absolutely delightful vegetable. Oftentimes, you don't get that beautiful, if you, let's say you're growing a, a snowball variety, the ones that has a really nice white head. Oftentimes you don't get the size of the head you want. You don't get that beautiful white color, especially if you don't take the time to, to break the leaves and tie them over top of the head once it starts to form. We've noticed that if we don't do things just right, if the temps outside aren't just right, we don't get the production of a head hardly at all. We've had that happen to us before. If it gets cold outside, you know, it's a brassica. And so as a brassica, they typically handle cool weather. That's fine. But if it, if you get a frost and that frost hits the head, it's, uh, it's just going to cause all kinds of problems. There is nothing quite as bad, as far as vegetables go, in my opinion, as the smell of a rotting brassica, something like your cauliflower. That The smell of a rotting cauliflower is a horrible smell, so you gotta be a little bit careful. So I agree, I think this one belongs 
on this list. All right, next up is sweet corn. And sweet corn is interesting because if I were to ask what you typically think of when you, you drive past the garden, you probably say you picture in your, in your mind, I would say tomatoes, and then I would say probably corn. I think corn's probably one of the most commonly grown vegetables throughout the U.S. I, I don't actually have very much of a doubt in that regard, and yet it made this list. And I understand that, actually, because all it takes is one bad windstorm. All it takes is not planting it in a, a dense enough group and not getting some good pollination. All it takes is cross-pollination with another variety. All it takes is a little bit of an infection to get that Wheela Coche growing and you end up with no sweet corn at all or minimal sweet corn or ears of sweet corn that are half developed and on top of that there are lots of critters out there like your raccoons for example or groundhogs that really love I'd say raccoons love sweet corn and they will go in there and they will peel the corn and eat the corn. And I'm speaking from personal experience, you'll go out there and everything will be destroyed. And so while this is a super common vegetable, if we account for the pests and the challenges that come from nature when it comes to the potential for blowing this corn over, etc., I agree that this should be on the list. Now, next up, this one's really interesting to me because we're going to get to one now where I don't really understand why this is on the list from our zone five experience. See, I think eggplant is a pretty prolific vegetable. It certainly has been for us. And once you get it started, once it's off to a good start, you wanna keep it nice and watered, but we haven't had to spend too much time with maintenance on our eggplant. And so I would say the last two years, eggplant, besides, uh, well, another plant we'll talk about in a little bit, but eggplant has been one of our most prolific producers in terms of this type of vegetable out there and so i don't really perceive eggplant as being all that difficult to grow you know one of the things that's interesting here is that this article claims that that hardiness zones 9 through 12 have the best chance for bountiful hard harvest but we're in zone 5 wisconsin and we've had no issue I do know it doesn't like the cold, so you don't want to leave the eggplants out too long. They'll start to turn a brown color. It's really, they become hard and leathery. So you just stay on top of it, but they grow, they're prolific. And if you have lots of pollinators in your garden, these aren't a problem whatsoever. So I don't think this one should be on the list. All right, next up is the plant that I hinted at just 30 seconds ago, which is the winter squash. And I'm trying to figure out why this is on this list. And I think maybe the reason is because of spacing and potentially pests. You see, winter squash does require quite a bit of space. But here what we've done is we've moved our winter squash or most of our winter squash production off-site to our community garden allotment where we have that allotment. And we've grown several hundreds of pounds each year for the last couple of years at that spot. So a couple hundred pounds of winter squash. And really that has been, you know, we, we try to take care of that area over there, but we haven't always been the best at getting over there. The hardest part for us with winter squash is making sure it's off to a good start. But once it gets in the ground, we have very few difficulties. Now there are a couple of pests that make this, or, or could potentially make this more challenging, including your cucumber beetle, your squash bug or your squash vine borer so i get that piece but one i would not avoid growing winter squash if you can help it get in there and try it but two i don't think this one's all that difficult to grow so i don't think this one should be on the list either but the next one which is carrots i'm going to agree with it being on the list primarily because you starting carrots starting them from seed can be a challenge. They're really sensitive. You don't plant them very deep. You need to keep everything nice and moist. That's all important. But you also have to have a good, deep, well-draining, sandy soil. Something that's gonna give you eight, 10 inches, depending on the variety of carrot, of course, but something's gonna give you eight to 10 inches of easy depth for these carrots to develop. And if you don't have those things, if you don't have the patience, if you don't stay on top of them, especially at the beginning, you're not going to get very good production and i'll be honest we didn't grow carrots this past season and we did the previous year but we didn't do it this past season primarily because i'm not 100 sure 
that these are worth the effort. Now, we've admitted this in previous videos, but organic carrots are one of the vegetables that we still often buy because it's not that expensive. And so I'm going to agree with this one being on the list. All right, next up, we've got onions and onions are really interesting. I was sitting here thinking I could go either way with this because we've had years, two years ago, for example, where we grew onions, we grew them from seed and we had no problem whatsoever getting a great crop. I didn't even feed them nitrogen during the growing season and they're heavy nitrogen feeders. But this past season, we struggled. We started from seed, we planted them out there and maybe it's because we left a couple times over the summer, didn't get enough of that good watering in, especially early on. And yeah, we struggle with them. And you know, there's so many different decisions you have to make when it comes to onions, whether you're gonna start from seed, from sets, from starts, whether or not you need a short day, a long day. There's so many different choices there that I can understand why it might be difficult to grow onions. And so I think that makes sense that it's on this list. Next up on their list is sweet potatoes. And if you've watched our content for any length of time at all, you know we absolutely love sweet potatoes. We grow so many sweet potatoes and potatoes here at Guten Gardening. This one's hard because I, uh, I, I actually do understand why this made the list. If you don't take care at the beginning of the growing season with your sweet potatoes, they will not get off to a good start. And if they don't get off to a good start, they won't put down those deep roots. You won't see the development of the plant above the surface. And then you won't see that really nice, though. you won't see the big sized roots, the, the bulbing up for those sweet potatoes later in the season. And one of the things that makes sweet potatoes difficult is the fact that you don't see what's happening during the growing season. You know, it's 110, 115 days for a lot of varieties. They take up a good bit of space, but also there are a lot of critters out there. And I'm gonna use voles as an example. And by the way, we just did a, a YouTube short about voles, if you haven't checked that out, but those critters come in and do a ton of damage and if you're not careful, what you'll end up with is a, a third, a fourth of the harvest that you expected because of all of that pest damage. And on top of that, if you leave the sweet potatoes in the ground too long, it gets too rainy at the end of the season. You could see splitting. You could see the sweet potatoes themselves start to sprout again. So there's a lot of reasons why I could see why this is on the list. And it hurts me to say it, but I would agree that sweet potatoes are not the easiest vegetable out there but this is one you should not avoid. It is 100% worth the try. All right, next to last on this list is a head of lettuce. Now you might be thinking, but lettuce isn't all that difficult to grow. Well, leafy lettuce really isn't all that difficult to grow as long as you don't have too much heat, as long as you water it enough, you know, lettuce is made up of a lot of water, as long as you don't leave it on too long and it becomes bitter. The leafy lettuce, the cut and come again lettuce isn't all that difficult. But the head of lettuce, you have to pick at the right time. Make sure it doesn't get bitter, especially. It is very easy if you're in the wrong growing zone or, or a growing zone that's too warm or you don't get enough rain or it's too much sun. It's very easy for it to go to seed, to sprout, to, to be bitter. And all of those things are the reason why we typically just grow the leafy lettuce and not the heads of lettuce. So while I'm not 100% sure that this is the most difficult or one of the most difficult, it's difficult enough to where I understand why this is on the list, but not the leafy lettuce. And last but not least on this list is asparagus. Now this one fascinates me. You see, the only reason I can think why asparagus would be on this list from our point of view is because of how long it takes before you actually harvest from the time of planting to the time of harvest, especially if you're growing from seed um, or, you know, in general, if you're transplanting in a couple of years, two, three, I, I think three to four years is a pretty good estimation for how long it's going to take before you get an asparagus crop. However, our asparagus, I'll, I'll give our asparagus as an example. We do nothing except cut it down at the end of the season after it's bolted and at the beginning of the next season remove any little pieces from the top that is left over from the stems from last season but it's one of the first vegetables it's the first vegetable to appear in the spring it's our notice that spring's here 
It's easy to deal with. We don't do much of anything besides that except enjoy it. It grows super, super quickly. I mean, you, you could be harvesting from just a couple of plants every two or three days. And so I don't really think this should be on the list whatsoever. To be honest, I think it's one of those vegetables that if you're not careful, you put it in the wrong spot, you could end up having a real hard time getting rid of because this stuff will last for decades. These plants will last for a very long time and they'll be back every single year. And again, that's speaking from a Zone 5 Wisconsin experience. Well, are there any vegetables from this list that should be on here from your point of view? Or are there some vegetables that you can't believe didn't make this list because you know for a fact they are way more challenging than the ones on this list. I'd love to hear from you. Again, this is the opinion of a singular website that says these are the most difficult. And again, it's, it's so hard to quantify that, especially given where you live, the differences in soils, etc. But I thought it was interesting to take a look at and I hope you enjoyed this video as well. Hey, if you did enjoy today's video, don't forget to give us a like. Leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.